today. Let's go back in time. Back before smartphones, cameras, and really old cameras. How did people record what they looked like before photography? I look so good. How can people remember me like this? I know, I know. I can paint a portrait. What is a portrait? A portrait is an artwork of a person. Often, it is just the face or shoulders and head like this one. But it can be the whole body too. Even a body in motion like this one on his horse. Are these portraits? No, they don't have people in them. More than one person can be in a portrait. For instance, a portrait of a couple or a family portrait. Sculptures of people are considered portraits too. Portraits have been around a long, long time. This one is from 25,000 years ago and it was carved from mammoth tusk ivory. Yes, woolly mammoths roamed the earth then. But it wasn't until about 600 years ago portraits became really popular. Kings and queens and other rich people would have their portrait painted. They would often wear their finest clothing and surround themselves with things that they wanted people to know about them. In this case, the couple is dressed in their finest in a beautiful room. They even included their dog, which is a very expensive, rare breed at the time. Another example is this noblewoman from Italy. She is called the Mona Lisa and is considered one of the world's most famous artwork. She has a mysterious smile and her eyes seem to follow you. Over time, lots of people could get their portraits painted, not just the super wealthy. Artists also would find others to paint as well, like their friends and relatives. This one on the right is the artist's mother. Artists would even paint their own portrait. These are called self-portraits. Imagine these painters looking in the mirror and painting these. Why did they do this? Sometimes it was to practice a new style. Sometimes, maybe they wanted to remember the moment in time or a feeling. Look at these self-portraits by Picasso. You can see how his art changed over time. Fast forward to today. Now we have photography. So portraits are everywhere. For example, school photos and the popular selfies. But photography hasn't ended painted portraits. We still enjoy them today and artists still create them. And now, you'll get to create a self-portrait too, so people can see what you look like behind your mask. Here are some examples so you can see what to expect. Now it's time to draw your self-portrait. Are you ready to get started with your self-portrait? All right, you're gonna need a piece of paper, a pencil, and an eraser. And that should be good for a start. Um, I'm gonna use this that's not a piece of paper, it's more like a whiteboard like your teacher uses, and a marker just so you can see it. But you should find a paper and pencil in case you need to erase. If you need to pause the video while you find your supplies, go ahead and do that. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you have everything you need. So I have here with me today my paper, but I also have a picture of my kids. Um, this is Jillian and this is Kitan, and they're going to be our models so that we have a real person to look at. Now you're going to draw your self-portrait so you can um, adjust as you need to to make this look like you. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the shape of our head. So let's think about how that would look. And I love that we have these pictures because we can see how a real head, like a portrait, how they look. So if I trace their head, I'm going to go a little lower on my son because his hair stands up. What shape do we see? I see kind of an oval or an egg shape. So on your paper, let's make a big emphasis on the big oval or egg or head shape like that. If 
you make a tiny little thing in the middle, you know, we don't have room to do anything with it to add detail. So let's keep it big, like what you see here. Um, if you made one small in the first place, you could always flip your paper over and, and make a nice big one. Okay, so the next thing let's do is draw our eyes. Now it's an easy and common mistake to put our eyes way up here. But that's not where our eyes are, that's where our forehead is, right? So let's look at our photograph and see where our eyes really belong. So if I take this picture of my daughter and I were to draw a line right where her eyes are, can you see that her eyes are actually right in the middle of her head? It's about halfway. So if I'm looking at my drawing, I'm gonna put my eyes right about here. And the first shape I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do her eye, is like an, a sideways parenthesis, like a very slightly curved line. So that's the top of her eye. I made another one for her left eye. So now we're gonna to go to the corner and we're gonna make another curved line and they're gonna meet at the edges. Some people would call this an almond shaped, like our eyes have an almond shape to them. See, if I erase this and I drew around Jillian's eyes, see, they have an almond shape. Now, the part in the middle, the colored part, does anybody know what that's called? It's called an iris. And it's a perfect circle, but sometimes our eyelid covers up a little bit of it. So I won't make hers. I won't, we won't see quite all of it, but that's the part of your eye that is blue or green or brown. And in the middle of that, we're gonna have a real black dot and that's called your pupil. And your pupil actually gets bigger or smaller to let in more light, like if it's getting dark outside, your pupil will get bigger to let in more light. Fun little fact. Okay, how about let's do our nose next. So let's go back to our photograph. And if we draw a line back through our eyes, and we draw a little curved line here for a nose, look, it's about halfway between her eyes and her chin is gonna be that curve of a nose. So if I take this space on my picture between my eyes and my chin, I'll have a little curve of a nose right in the middle. And we'll go back to our draw our picture. And if we want, you don't have to, but you could draw the bridge of a nose, this line here. We could come and show the side or the bridge of her nose. Now, Above her eyes, let's not forget her eyebrows or the eyebrows. This could be a boy just as well as it could be a girl. Um, they go above the eyes like this. And eyebrows are super important because they show emotion and mood a lot. So just for fun, watch what happens if I make my eyebrows different. Watch. If I put my eyebrows at an angle like this, Oh, all of a sudden my person is mad, right? I just made them mad, put their eyebrows different. Let's try the other way. What if I put them kind of off to the side and up high? I think now my person looks kind of worried or maybe a little upset. So our eyebrows are important. We shouldn't forget eyebrows when we're drawing. So I'm gonna draw them back about normal. You might want to make them a little thicker or thinner depending on how your eyebrows look. I'll make these ones a little thicker. If you want, you could put a nostril, just a smaller curved line for a nostril. Okay, let's go back to our photograph and figure out where our mouth should be. So if I just, I'm going to go easy and I'm going to pretend our mouth is closed even though it's not in the picture. If I draw a mouth on my picture, it's about halfway between the end of my nose and my chin. Maybe a little bit higher than that, but not much. And a mouth also shows emotion. So I'm gonna give my mouth a little curve like my person is happy. Okay, but my mouth is missing something. 
I want lips. Everybody has lips, right? So they might seem tricky, but I bet you can do them just fine. You just need to think of hills or mountains. So if I start at the corner and I go, whoop, whoop, look, I made two little hills and now I have lips. Do you hear my birds? I have a parakeet in here that's making sweet little sounds. Maybe that's why this person is happy. All right, now the bottom lip, I just started on one side and I came down and over, almost think like you're making a boat and you have a mouth. Okay, what else do we need? Right now, I have a floating head, right? This head has nothing attaching it to anything. So let's add a neck. And it's common for people to make the mistake of making a skinny little pencil neck. Don't do that, that looks silly, huh? Our heads are big and we need pretty strong wide necks to hold up our head. So they come about from the sides of our head and then we go off to the side to make shoulders. We just curve off to the side to make shoulders. Now, shoulders tend to be about the width of your head and we don't have that much room on our paper so we'll just go all the way off the edge of our paper. Okay, I'm gonna show you a quick trick. How to get dressed in record time. Are you ready? One, two, three. Whoop, look, our person suddenly has a shirt on. And if I wanna make it a t-shirt, I could do another line and add the little stripes for like the ribs that go around your collar if you wear a t-shirt. You can make a t-shirt if you want. Okay, let's think about our ears. So I think on our picture over here, it's easier if I show my son because look, my daughter's hair covers her ears up. And if your hair covers your ears, maybe you don't need to draw them, but it is good to know where they go. So let's look at that. So let's trace my son's ears and let's see where they go. Looks like the top of your ears is right a little bit above your eyebrows. And the bottom is, you know, almost as long as your nose. So let's see. If I go make a backward letter C, starting about the eyebrows and another backward letter C. I have ears, yay! Okay, I think what we really need to do now is add some hair. Now, if you want, and if you have some handy, you could find some colored pencils or crayons or markers, and you could just draw your hair right on in color in the first place. I'm gonna use the black because that's the best color I have for you to see. But if you wanted to choose a color, you totally could. Um, the most important thing to think about with our hair is where to start our hair. And we don't want to just draw hair sticking up out the top of our head because that is not really, our hair grows all the way down onto our forehead. That actually has a name and it's called a hairline. So let's see if we were doing somebody with longer hair. Let's do that. See, it's gonna grow all the way down onto their forehead. And we'll see the hair from the back of their head in this little spot here. So I'm just gonna draw some more lines to kind of show how our hair flows. And that is how somebody with long straight hair might look. Um, if you had, let's say, curly hair and shorter hair, maybe you do like this. But even if it's short hair, it's going to come down onto your forehead. So I'm gonna show it a little like this. Maybe I'd have a little bit showing down here behind the ear. Maybe cover up a little of the ear, that's up to you. Um, so go ahead and add your hair. And then if you want, you can color the rest of your picture. You can add color in your irises. Are they green? Are they blue? Are they brown? You could add color to your skin, although we've noticed it's the crayons. Um, and colored pencils and stuff often don't have really perfect colors for that. But you can try that. 
You could color your t-shirt and your lips. So I hope you have enjoyed making a self-portrait today. If you really loved it, you could draw another one, maybe of a family member. And whatever you do, I hope you have an art-filled week. Thanks again for joining me. See you next time.